people have read it, what's the most desperate thing you've ever done for money? I got paid for sex more than a few times in high school and in my early 20s. No shame in it. I needed the money. Early on, I looked way older than I was, so people didn't know that they were sleeping with a teenager. I realize now that that's my bad, but at the time, I was self-medicating and needed drug money and wasn't really thinking about being an honest prostitute. Anyway, I got out of it in my early 20s after a rather unpleasant experience or two, and decided to never do it again. Cut to me at 28, and I am doing pretty well in a real career making money in a more stable way. I've been promoted a few times, and all is well. And they lay me off. Out of nowhere. Alright, fine, I think. I've got all these promotions. I've been here for a few years now. I should be able to find a job easy. Nope. Recession. No one is hiring some dude with nothing but good references. We want 10 years experience in a college degree. So cut to me unemployed with nothing to do. I'm in a chat room one night looking to hook up. Thank God for neighbors who like to share their Wi-Fi password. And a guy hits me up and gets me to talking about my past. He says he really wants to suck my dick, and I explain that I have had my dick sucked so many times that it does nothing for me anymore. If I even come, it takes hours. This is not some brag. It sucks. Pun intended, though. Well, he saw this as nothing but a challenge. Tells me he'll suck my dick until I come, and if he gives up, he'll pay me $200. I didn't hesitate. I didn't have food in the fridge and barely had gas in the tank, and I knew for a fact this guy was going to be unable to make me come. I spent my last dollars on enough gas to get me to the other side of town. I wasn't going to even have enough to get back if this guy somehow managed to do what he was so sure he could do, but I was sure he wasn't, and I was right. Let's just say he had somehow been misled in his capabilities, even with normal people, let alone me. He was furious. Told me I wouldn't get paid unless he could make me come. I guess he thought I was intentionally holding out for the money. I told him that wasn't part of the deal. He told me to fuck off. I just stood there and thought about having to walk home and three more days of hunger until my unemployment check came in. So I did something I'd never done before in my life and haven't done since. Something totally out of character for me. I beat the living crap out of that guy and took the money he owed me. I was just mad at the world and took it out on him. Had it not meant walking home and going hungry, I know I would have just left, but I kind Kind of snapped. Anyone I've ever told this story to has said he had it coming, but like, I never do a very concise job of explaining just how badly I beat him up. And you might be reading this just thinking I'm probably a violent person in general, but really, I don't even like to kill bugs. So I feel guilty about it all these years later. All that being said, I got a job a couple of weeks later. A pretty good one that eventually allowed me to leave the state and start over somewhere else. I got a huge signing bonus, called the guy up, and gave it to him along with the most profuse and pitiful apology of my life. Then stuck around long enough to help him recover, and we still check in on each other sometimes. So it wasn't the worst possible ending to this story. But still, I think about it anytime I am contemplating reacting in anger, and remind myself that the one time I did, I hurt someone far more than they deserved. I participated in a U.S. Department of Defense study looking at the effects of sleep and calorie deprivation and if those effects could be offset with testosterone supplementation. The first week, I went to the location every day, weighed in, was given food, had blood drawn, did a test to find my resting metabolic rate, and did some exercise familiarization. At the end, they took a muscle biopsy from my thigh. I also received two injections. Didn't know whether it was 
was testosterone or a placebo oil. For the second to fourth weeks, 21 days, I stayed at the location. It consisted of four five-day cycles. Three days were high stress where we got four hours of sleep, and two days were low stress where we got eight. High stress days also had an extra workout session. They woke me up at 4 a.m. every day. Most days started with blood draws. Every day had a weigh-in and urine check, small snack, then an outdoor ruck for several miles with a 70-pound pack. The distance varied between around 4 and around 10 miles, then food, then a workout session of treadmill running, treadmill walking, elliptical, and biking, then lunch, then military activities such as sled pulls, farmer walks, hole digging, etc., then another workout session, then dinner. High stress days had another session after dinner. Every six days, we were tested for strength and with a set distance ruck along a set path, rather than the free roam of our usual morning ruck. We also had ongoing cognitive testing. At the end of this phase, they took another muscle biopsy. The last four weeks, I went in every day to be weighed, given food, and check in. At the end of this, I had one last muscle biopsy taken and one last session of strength and cognitive testing. The second phase was designed to mimic parts of ranger school. My total rucking amount was about 20 miles a day with a 70-pound rucksack. That doesn't count the miles of walking, biking, and elliptical. At the end, I hadn't seen my pinky toes in days from bandages. Had moleskin on the balls of my feet where the blisters never had time to heal. I was asleep on my feet if I didn't have a specific physical task. But they wouldn't let us sleep unless it was bedtime, 12 to 4 or 8 to 4 depending on the day. We all watched Game of Thrones and several movie series including the Annabelle movies. I also lost 16 pounds during those 20 days. I nearly quit, but I didn't. The pay was really good though, and I had the summer off as a teacher. Found out several months at the end that I had been in the treatment group and given testosterone. I had gained a small amount of muscle and lost weight while on a huge calorie deficit. Was homeless for a while when I was younger and lived in Massachusetts. Summer was easy, but late fall to like the middle of spring, it was far too cold to not have a bed. So we'd stay at a local motel, cancel the stay during the day so we didn't have to pay, then rebook for the night time. We'd also take and steal money from the tip jar. Some little old lady always worked at the front. She knew the situation and was perfectly fine with us taking the tips and only booking the nights. She even told us where they would put the buffet food no one ate, which they would store in a chilled room for the workers to eat, but they never did. Eventually, the manager of the motel found us out and almost kicked us to the curb. But thankfully, he was a nice guy, and my dad talked him into letting us stay and letting my dad and mom work there as well as all four of us me, my dad, my mom, and my sister, stay in the suite which had three beds instead of the one bed and large couch which all the other rooms had. Thanks to that man, God bless his soul, he died in 2020 from COVID. We were able to eventually move into a project development and then sometime after into our own apartment. I'm now 16, almost 17. This was five years ago. I now live in a pretty decent sized house that my parents own. In one of the many Southern states, not disclosing for my privacy, just as a reminder to everyone going through hard times, no matter what the situation is, it will get better. Just give it time and continue working for what you want. I co-owned a construction company in the early 2000s with a friend. We remodeled apartment complexes all over the country. We had been trying to get in with the largest property management firm in the country, who had a corporate office in Chicago. The lady who awarded contracts took a shine to me. A huge contract to do a full exterior rehab on three complexes, all adjacent to one another, was on the table. It was made clear that a night with this woman would get us the contract. 
which held a nearly $2 million profit margin over three years. Now, sleeping with this woman doesn't sound like a big deal, but this was a large, very tall German woman who looked like Kathy Bates, but uglier, and 30 years my senior. I was really positive that the little general wouldn't stand at attention. I mean, it was like fucking a female Shrek. I went through with it, we got the contract, along with a lot more work but not without having to repeat the performance periodically. Whiskey, my dick skills, strong stomach, and a damn good crew are what put me on the road to being able to retire at 40, if I had chosen to do so. As a kid with a single parent, I was aware of the financial struggles from the start. I wanted to help my mom somehow. When I was six or seven, just before Christmas, I handmade Christmas cards. I loved drawing and coloring in. I'm not saying it was any good, but I was enthusiastic and creative and went door to door selling them to people on our street. I remember selling some and my mom accusing me of stealing money because she didn't believe that anyone would buy them. <laughs> Three years later, my mom occasionally helped out at the flower nursery and would bring me with her. I noticed they would discard some flowers because they weren't in a perfect shape. I asked if I could take some with me. They let me have them and I plucked bad petals and leaves and used wire to keep some of the wilted ones upright. I made two bunches from the cast-offs, sat next to the local bus stop around the time people were coming back from work, sold them within 20 minutes and immediately went to buy my nerdy self a kid's puzzle magazine. That was the only thing I'd ask my mom for every month. I had sex with another man for money a few times in my mid-twenties. By curious at the time, so it wasn't completely unattractive for me. A few notable things. 1. His dick was legit huge. 2. His apartment smelled like bubblegum spackle. 3. He tried to get me involved with his older gay friends, as I could have been a hot commodity, presumably as a twink-type boy toy. Briefly considered it, but that wasn't for me. 4. I got a speeding fine on my way home once, which was almost equal to what he paid me. A net loss for the evening, considering time, petrol, condoms, etc., which sucked. 5. I had a partner at the time, long distance, and she got off on the idea of me having sex with men and liked hearing my stories. Sometimes I just make something up to be more salacious. 6. I had to cut him off when I realized that our arrangement was doing more harm to him than good. He wasn't seeking sex but intimacy, and I felt horrible for taking advantage of that. He also got weird about why he had to pay me, if I was enjoying it, etc. I did fundraising for the National Republican Senatorial Committee in college. It did give me a memory that will stick with me till the day I die. We obviously had a script to go off that demonized folks like Hillary Clinton, George Soros, and the like. So here I am talking to this gentleman, telling him about how those evil liberal billionaires are amassing a war chest, and then I said, did you know Hillary Clinton wants to socialize health care? The gentleman replied agreeably. Oh, that, that would be horrible. So after a couple of minutes of getting this guy riled up, I say something to the effect of, Well, sir, I'm really glad we've got you on board, but like I said, those liberals are amassing a huge amount of money, and we really need your help to fight back. If we could garner your support at any level, even five or ten bucks, it would really go a long way to help out. His reply? Son, I'd love to help you out, but I am so in debt from medical bills right now. I wouldn't consider this desperate, but coming from a single parent family, my mom told us if we wanted certain toys or items to go earn it. She meant sell some shit or work. So I got the bright idea after one summer of knocking on doors in the neighborhood to sell chocolate for baseball, let's do it personally. Halloween gets here and my younger brother and I go collect as much candy as we can. I'm talking about speed running that shit. Pillowcases were our candy bags. We bag all of it up, four people pieces to a Ziploc bag, then we put our baseball jerseys back on, I send my younger brother to knock on the door first as the icebreaker. I mean, who's going to tell an 8 year old to fuck off? I was three years older. We would sell candy back to the neighborhood after Halloween and make $300 to $500 each season till we got too old to do it. <laughs> it was a glorious hustle from 10 to 14 years old. <laughs> 
used to beat people for money when I was in my teens and early 20s. I was hooked on OxyContin really bad back then, and because I played middleman for everybody, I got a lot of free product over charging people. My habit got really bad this way, and before long, I was taking money from friends and others that got their shit through me. I would just wait for people to ask me to get them something, meet them, and take their money and then turn my phone off. Also set up one of my friends to get robbed for a quarter pound of weed. Got paid a certain amount of money to do that for them. I think it was like 150 bucks. OxyContin had me really fucked up back then. Been clean for like 14 years now. Still look back on that shit to this day and think all that shitty stuff I did is the reason I have such bad luck now. Karma is a bitch. Many years ago, me and my girlfriend at the time were living together and I had gotten laid off from my current job. In the following month after going through almost $3,000 plus dollars of my savings, I warned her we may not have enough to get to the end of the lease. I started doing odd and end jobs like Uber for hours a day every day as well as working as a temp in a factory till my wrists were bleeding from folding boxes. At that time, my girlfriend got an offer to sleep with a guy and he offered her $800. Hardest decision of our life. I told her not to do it if she didn't want to, but $800 would be a big help. She ended up not doing it, and we made it to the end of the lease, thanks to both of our families helping, but it was a rough time. About 10 years ago when I was homeless, a kind old homeless lady that I used to buy water and snacks for was crying because she was $20 short of getting a hotel room for the night and she wanted to shower so bad. So I had a friend drive me to Walmart and I walked around the parking lot looking for receipts until I found one with something decent that wasn't food. It had a $40 case of diapers on it, so I went inside, matched the barcode on the receipt to a box of diapers on the shelf, and went up to customer service and said my mom wanted me to return them. Got $40 cash, gave half to the lady for her hotel, and then spent the rest on food and drinks. She was so happy she started crying again and hugged me. I still think about that day a lot. I honestly can't remember all the messed up shit I had to do to survive, but off the top of my head, armed robbery, sex for housing, pimped a friend out once, sold a lot of drugs, door-to-door -door sales, uh, not drugs those times, fence stolen goods, telemarketing, begging and flying signs, hitchhiking, a wide variety of store return scams, breaking and entering, theft, smuggling cigarettes, fireworks, and booze across state lines, restaurant work, sold plasma, and oh, so much more. Thankfully, I was only a petty criminal and not a particularly mean person. I have roughed up a few people who owed me money, but I never seriously hurt anyone and it wasn't personal. I never sexually assaulted anyone, and despite handling thousands of dollars daily, I never stole from any of my employers. That was years ago. Thanks, Statute of Limitations, and I have since turned over a new leaf. I've been paid for sex, was working as a concierge, and it was a rough year economically. Had a very powerful businesswoman take a liking to me, told me she was going to try and pick someone up that night, and that I was her backup, to which I responded, I hope you strike out. She came back right before my shift ended and told me to come upstairs at the end of my shift. I changed clothes and put on a hat, walked up, and she paid me before I signed the NDA and called out the next day so I could catch up on sleep. Also, have been paid to be a bull for someone a few times, but that was off Tinder, and they suggested it outright because I wasn't interested at first until they offered 500 bucks a session. Where I live, we have a thing called pant, which means that you pay more for a bottle but get the money back when you recycle it. As a kid, we used to go out and find empty PET bottles or beer cans, recycle them, and buy some candy and soda. Me and my brother came up with a genius idea of just knocking on people's doors and asking if they had any empty bottles. I think we managed to get a decent amount of cash. Also, kissed a friend's foot when I was drunk for what's the equivalent of about half a dollar. Someone taped the kiss as well. Turns out that the dude who got it on film has a foot fetish and watches the video from time to time. I think I made foot porn for 50 cents US dollars. 
Right after we bought our house and had our daughter, the company I worked for laid off 50% of the staff, and those of us that remained took a 15% pay cut for six months. During that time, we had sold off our collectibles and offloaded any old electronics we weren't using. The end of that year, as the holidays loomed, we needed more cash. The price of copper was through the roof, and the price of CPVC was dirt cheap in comparison. I gutted the exposed copper and brass that was in our basement and replaced all of it with CPVC piping for extra money. Only gained about 150 bucks for all the work that it took, but every penny counted back then. When I was 15, a friend and my mom borrowed some money off of her and was paying her back in installments. She lived near my school, so I used to collect the cash on my way home. One week she couldn't pay and was desperate, so offered to give me a blowjob if she could skip a week. Obviously I agreed, and she performed oral sex on me. I told my friend about it, and a few days later he knocked on her door and offered her money for a blowjob. She agreed, and within weeks she was being visited by loads of underage boys paying for her sexual services. Never missed another installment, though. Helped a guy steal about a dozen leather jackets from a leather store so he could sell them and buy drugs. Stolen meat, razors, carts full of electronics from Walmart. Stole the kitchen tips from a restaurant I worked at. Had sex with the bartender at the same restaurant for drugs. The sex wasn't the bad thing, I was just cheating on my addict girlfriend at the time, which I guess made me a bad person. Sold fake drugs to teenagers for drug money. Sold my methadone for drug money. Asked my nana for grocery money and spent spent it on drugs. I'm sure there is more I can't think of right now. Back in 1993, I went on a road trip around the US for the summer with friends. In a Volkswagen camper van, of course. I ran out of money somewhere along the Gulf Coast. One of my friends had a tin full of embroidery threads, so I started doing hair wraps at beach tourist traps. I ended up making about $100 a day. And as my friends ran out of money, they joined in. By the time we'd worked our way up the East Coast, we had multiple organizers full of embroidery thread and beads. It covered our campgrounds, food, and fuel. Once we ran out of beach towns, we headed back home. A travel agency in my hometown that booked Disney vacations and cruises started offering party hosts dressed as Disney characters. I was young at the time, but all it took was a little bit of makeup to make me look like Jack Sparrow. I made $100 an hour to act like a drunken ass in front of the kids and tie a balloon or paint a face here and there. And the worst of the moms would pay to see Jack in private. I think word spread because POTC became a huge request and I knew some angry dads I didn't know about were gonna come knocking one day, so I quit. I was $96 short on rent one month, and I was terrified. I seriously considered stripping that day. I even went so far as to go into a strip club and walked right back out. I would have been crushed if anyone I knew found out, so I couldn't go through with it. I shit you not, I was digging around in my closet later that day and found a $100 bill and a pair of jeans I hadn't worn in a while. I took it as a sign from the universe and never looked back. Thank you, irresponsible past me, for stupidly looking out for future me.